feel. Oh, wow, these are fucking cool, dude. Fucking dope. Do you still make care of the pretzel fucking Klondike for now? Oh shit, there's, oh yeah, that's right though. It's like, oh shit, there's two dice, man, though. There has to be two fucking dice. Alright, this is definitely missing pieces, I think. So I can make it work. I can make it work. Oh, it's totally fucking missing pieces, man. That should be six of each, right? Up, Leo. Ah, there you are. You're alive.
I'm still missing a piece, aren't I? I don't know. Why does it say Cody Rhodes? Why does what say Cody Rhodes? What are you talking about? The YouTube timer? Why would it say Cody Rhodes? I don't know. I've never seen that before. Huh. Let me see if it says it on my end. Uh, let me see if it says it on my end. That's weird. Yeah, that is weird. And it's gone now. Were you watching anything related to Cody Rhodes before me? That could be it. No? Oh, yeah, that's right, because you're an AEW boy now. I forgot. Well, not now, but you know what I mean. You have ice cream? Okay, first the Cody Rhodes thing. Now, now fucking this. That's the game, Leo.
Hopefully we get enough people in here to play. Look at these little mini fucking Klondike bars and shit. Look at these. All right, I'm lagging ass here. Somebody at work bought me one of these, so. Some of these flavors, I don't think they even fucking make anymore. Like, I don't think they make caramel pretzel anymore. I'm pretty sure they make dark chocolate. I don't think they make caramel pretzel or fucking Rocky Road anymore. All the rest, I think they do crunch, which is essentially heat bump. I got home late last night, I assume. Flight got delayed two hours in Atlanta. And then, like, I had allergies so bad last night, I was wishing for death last night. Like, when you when you texted me last night, fuck, I, I, was, I was, like, praying for death, dude. Dinner the flight from wheels up, two wheels down, and only dirt to it. Fuck Atlanta, that's why. You think that's bad? Go to the Atlanta fucking Greyhound station if you think that's bad. The Atlanta Greyhound station will make you fucking yearn for the fucking uh, Atlanta airport. <laughs> Like, here's, here is, so I'm riding the fucking bus. I think I'm riding to St. Louis, right? Yeah, I'm riding to St. Louis. And there's a layover in Atlanta. Okay, fine. And I think the layover is like, I don't know, two hours or something. I don't know. So I go get a drink and shit like that. And um, I just walked around and used the airport. Plane, train, back and forth, and got something to eat. So, um, I think you know, if you've never been to the bus station, there's numbered doors. So, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the numbered door tells you what bus you know you got to go to and shit. So, our door was four. So, I'm like, you know what? Let me get a drink, and then I'm gonna park my ass in front of number four. You know. There's already people lining up in front of that fucking door. So I get my drink. I get all my shit. Walk over to door four. I'm like, eh, I'm like sixth or seventh in line, you know? Oh, okay. Sorry, me and Jamie were talking. I was trying to run game on Jamie. Anyway, um, like I have any or some shit. Anyway, so I'm like sixth or seventh in line. So the two hours go by, right? On top of all that, it's the only bus station I've been at where they've done this. But like they have a security guard come down and check everyone's bag, you know, make sure they're not carrying anything illegal or anything like that. And shit. Okay, fine. You know, I don't, I don't give a shit. I got nothing to hide in my bags. Now, when I was in North Carolina, I bought some cigars when I was smoking and shit. So the security guard gets to me. He was like, bag check. I was like, yeah, sure. Open my bag and everything. And he's looking through it and shit. He's like, what's this? I'm like, DVD player. You know, whatever. He sees the cigars. And he's like, what are those? I was like, cigars. And he's like, um, okay. And he's like, can I see them? And like, I move like the bag to where like, see, Swisher Sweet Cigar. And he's just like, can you take them out? I'm like, Okay. Here you go. And he's like, can you open them? 
what the fuck, man? You, do you want one? Is is this where this is going? You know? So I open the little fucking Ziploc bag, and he's looking inside, and he's just like, okay, all right, you're good. I'm like, what the fuck was the point of all that? You know? So if that wasn't bad enough, again, they had us stand in line in front of the fucking door. I want to stress that. Again, let me say it again so you understand. They had us stand in line in front of the fucking door. And I'm like sixth or seventh in line. Okay? So, all the time pass. Security guard checks everybody and shit. About time to load. You know, they, they opened the fucking door, you know, to let you go out to your bus and shit. And we're sitting there waiting. You know, it's it's going to be a packed bus. We know it's going to be a packed bus. So, like, the, the closer you are to the front of the line, the better the fucking seat you're going to get. You know, and I know it's Greyhound, it's a bus, like, oh, what, what fucking good seat could you get? You get your pick of the litter if you're, like, towards the fucking front of the line. Anyway, I digress. So, time comes, we're waiting for them to open the door so we can go and shit. They open the door and say, okay, to St. Louis or whatever. All of a sudden, everybody just fucking crowds the fucking door. I go from, like, being fucking 6th or 7th in line to, like, 20th. And I'm like, what the fuck the point of the line? Oh, fuck. I hate fucking Atlanta. The only cool thing that was cool about Atlanta was driving past the TNT headquarters. That was cool. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, where fucking Coke was made. And I'm looking at a goddamn vending machine of Coke, and it's just Diet Coke in there. And I'm like, really? Couldn't give us no Diet Barks or Sprite or fucking Coke Zero or fucking anything. Just fucking Diet Coke. I'm only where fucking Coke was goddamn born. And that's all you can fucking give us in this machine? I was, I hate it. I fucking hate Atlanta, Georgia. At least the bus station. You know, cool shirt. Yes, my Power Rangers shirt. <laughs> Cowabunga, motherfucker. Ooh, play a game, you say. Yes, if we get enough people in here, we can play What Would You Do for a Klondike Bar? Cool little game I found at the um, Half Price Bookstore. I just checked. Uh, from Savannah to Orlando on a Flix bus is 120. I don't know fuck. Look, I, I rode Greyhound. Because, fuck, if you're going to ride a bus, ride Greyhound. Which I will tell you, like, riding Greyhound, like, depending on how, how long your ride is, like, when I'm going from Illinois to North Carolina, it, it's seriously, like, fucking, if there's no delays, which that never fucking happens, <laughs> but if there's no delays, it's 32 hours. That's, that's what it is. So... And, like, the first, like, fucking, like, 12 to 16 hours, you're like, wow, this is really fun. Look at all the fucking shit I get to see and everything. I'd never see this fucking shit if I just sat at home and shit like that. Once you get to, like, 20, 24 hours, that's where you start to feel the fucking seat. Your ass hurts and your back and everything. And it's just like, fuck, you know, like, okay, this is cool and all, but, like, fuck, I just, you know, whatever. You know, you're just praying for the next stop so you can get out and get something to eat or drink or something. Now, if you're on one of those, like, 32-hour buses like me, of course, there's delays and shit. So, like, it's really, like, 36. You know, 36 to 38. Once you get to that 34, 35-hour mark, you're like, fuck this Greyhound shit, man. You're fucking over it, man. You know, fuck the scenery and shit like that. You're fucking over it, man. You know? You could get off the bus and there'd be two fucking penguins blowing each other and you'd be happy to fucking see it. You know? 
there's always delays. Even flying now, you're pretty much guaranteed to have delays. Shit, you, you think that's bad flying? Go Greyhound. Take Greyhound one time. Like, fucking, okay, so first time I took Greyhound, um, I'm I'm riding to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and, like, the next, the next, like, actual fucking stop for me is, like, going to be my destination. So, but the thing is, I have a fucking, I have, like, a four or five hour layover in Winston-Salem. No, wait. Six, three hours. It was supposed to be a three-hour layover. That's what it was. It was supposed to be a three-hour layover in Winston-Salem. Because I was supposed to get on the bus at fucking nine o'clock. Nine o'clock comes. There's no bus. And we're like, okay, delay. No problem. 9.30 comes. No bus. And we're like, okay. 10 o'clock comes. No bus. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, it turned into a three-hour layover, turned into a fucking five-hour layover. 11 o'clock. 11 goddamn o'clock, the fucking bus finally pulls up. And we're, and you know, I'm not the only one. The rest of the people who are going to be riding this bus are like, you know, what the fuck? <laughs> Where the fuck you been? You know, apparently somebody decided, you know, they don't let you get drunk. On a fucking bus. You get drunk on a bus, obviously that's a fucking no-no and shit. Apparently somebody got drunk, started yelling at people and shit, so they literally stopped the bus, yanked this guy off and shit. It was like a whole fucking scenario and shit. And um, they fucking, that's what took them so long to uh, get to us and everything. So, hold on. Yeah, a train would be cool. It's so fucking expensive to take a train. That's the only problem. It's like, oh, where are you going? Fucking Raleigh, North Carolina? The Durham, North Carolina? All right. $400. Like, what? I'm just fucking walking. Like, you know. Greyhound is the only bus company in all of America. I mean, no, there's others. There's trailways because when you go from North Carolina to Iowa, in St. Louis, you have to get off of Greyhound and get on to trailways to get to Iowa. Well, there fucking no Greyhound comes to Iowa. At least not to my knowledge. It's trailways around here. You can transfer the Greyhound. Like, if I were going, like, Cedar Rapids to, like, fucking North Carolina, I'd probably hop a bus at in Cedar Rapids and fucking um, transfer in St. Louis to a Greyhound and then take Greyhound the rest of the way. It's made bright line, but that's only from Miami to Orlando Airport. Well, I mean, shit. Train is fun. I've done it before. I did it from fucking, what was it? 
Raleigh to was it Winston Salem? I think it was Winston Salem. No, Charlotte. Charlotte. That's what it was. Raleigh to Charlotte. And that was kind of funny. But then I think about how long it takes and I'm gonna have to pay Uber and shit. So I just take my car. Yeah. And I will say, I mean, the scenery on a bus, I will say, is a lot nicer than the scenery on a train. Because when you're on a train, you're basically, and this is not a joke. Y'all are going to be like, ha ha, he's funny. No, I mean, this is not a joke. This is literally what you see on a train. You're literally looking at the backyards of America. I mean, every now and then you'll get some city views and shit like that. But, like, you're mainly looking at fucking backyards. You know, when you're going, you'll see some open field every now and then, and then you get a glimpse of cities and shit like that. Really not a lot to look at. Whereas, at least on Greyhound, man, like, fucking, I remember going through Tennessee at, like, 6 o'clock in the morning when, like, the sun was coming up and shit. So it was, like, a really nice view and shit. You know, the sun was coming up, the sky was all nice and purpley and shit like that. It was really nice in the morning. You know, that's what that was before I was fucking over it. You know, like once I got to, I was over it once I got to like Lithburg, Virginia. That's when I was just like, I just want to fucking be there. You know, that's when I was like really starting to fucking get over it. Well, yeah, I mean, if you go to Colorado or Utah, probably, but like, you know, generally you're going to be looking at fucking backyards, you know? Now, I will say, Greyhound, there are some places that, like, a fucking Evansville, Indiana, fucking skip it. Caleb, what is up? What's going on, man? Oh, fuck. Didn't see that poll there. Shit, my bad. Um, <laughs> Caleb gets it. I took a Greyhound from downtown Chicago to Cedar Rapids. Fuck that. <laughs> Yeah, some of the people on a fucking bus on Greyhound, man, are fucking, like, when me and the ex broke, when me and the baby mama broke up, right? Meanwhile, I've been in a hotel for three days. So, mind you, I'm kind of, like, looking like this, you know, kind of a little scruffy and shit like that. So, I get to the bus station. I got, like, a good seat. I got, like, the window seat. I got, like, the chargers and shit like that, you know. So, the whole fucking ride there, you know, again, you know, my fucking life at that moment, it's fucking falling apart and shit, you know? So, like, I'm just sitting there, like, fucking looking at whatever's on my screen. I don't even know what the fuck I was... I think I was listening to music. I don't even fucking remember. That, that tells you how fucking bad I was. I don't even fucking remember. And, like, I remember this one stop. I want to say it was in Tennessee, maybe. You know? And I remember... Um... <laughs> And the bus was kind of empty when we left and shit. So, like, I, you know, I had the seat to myself, which is real nice. When you have the seat to yourself on the ground, oh, my God, that's, like, the fucking, that's the fucking bee's knees right there, man. But anyway, more people are getting on it, more stops and shit like that. So, like, I'm sitting there, and, like, I'll never fucking forget this. Man. Fucking, I think it was a girl uh, or, like, a manly-looking girl. I can't remember. So, like, I'm sitting there again. Baby mama cheated on me. Fucking, I'm moving away from my kid. I'm fucking on this bus, on the way to Iowa and shit like that. And I'm just sitting there looking fucking straight ahead, man. We make a stop and all these people are getting on. And I see this, uh, like in my peripheral, I see like this person coming up the aisle. And like they see the seat next to me empty. And I knew somebody was going to end up taking the seat. So like my shit's not in the seat at this point. So like I'm sitting there just like, you know, just praying for death. You know, because whatever. So all of a sudden, the person like I can I I can tell she's all like fuck yeah man wherever she's going she's like hell yeah man I'm excited and everything. She goes to sit in my seat, and like I just turn and look at her. No, I didn't give her like a mean look or anything, you know. But let me turn this way so I can give you all the look. So like I'm sitting in my seat, and she comes over and she like goes to sit down, and I just kind of look at her with, like the saddest fucking look ever, just. And she took one look at that face. She was just like, put her fucking book bag back on her fucking shoulder and kept walking. 
She was like, whatever the fuck he's going through, I want no fucking part of that shit. You know? Because, like, I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden I felt her sit, uh, I felt her about to sit down. I was, let me take my glasses off. It was just, she was just like, <laughs> all right. And just kept on walking, man. She was like, I want no fucking part of whatever the fuck he's going through. You know? <laughs> that ain't worse. She never got him gray out again. You know? But, like, uh, fucking, if the, the, I'll never fucking forget that, man. Because, like, I didn't even say anything. I didn't look at her maliciously or anything like that. It was just the way she was just like, all right. And then she went to sat down. And I just looked up at her. Didn't say anything. Didn't give her, like, this, like, please don't sit here, look. You know, anything. Just, you know, just looked at her like, oh, okay, you're sitting here. You know, that's how I looked in my brain. Like, okay, you're going to sit here now. Cool. You know, and she was just like, all right. And just kept on walking, man. She was like, I right, whatever the fuck he's going through, I am not gonna fucking bother it or be a part of it. I am out of here. You know, eventually somebody did sit in that seat, but but just that that girl, I'll never I'll never get that image out of my brain. Like I said, I can't tell you what the fuck I was watching on that bus, listening to, whatever, but like, I think I was listening to Pandora and I didn't think about it. Um Oh, you know what? The one song I do remember listening to on Greyhound was on that Greyhound trip was I want to say it was Mirrors by Justin Tim oh excuse me by Justin Timberlake. That's what I want to say. So I wrote down the notes for a big podcast episode. I've been putting it off for a while. And I figured it's Jax, what's up? Uh, I figured it's finally time to do it. Um, because you know, some of the episodes that I originally wrote, I have to be in a certain mindset to actually want to do. Like, for example, the Angelica episode, that's gonna take a lot of fucking notes to get that episode done and everything. Um, in my book, there's uh there's a story. That I really should have put at the end of the book, really thinking about it. But um, it's like in the, it's like right in the middle. But um, I am going this week or next week, I should say. Next week I will be telling the Tatiana story. Uh, which whew, that's that one's rough on me. You know, because that, that story still kind of fucks with me to this day, you know. But that will be the next episode of Stories No One Asked for the Podcast. Um, Caleb crying. I remember that. Oh, Caleb, you haven't heard fucking nothing yet, dude. There, there's so Caleb, you only know up to the punch, like where she punched me in the face. There's so much fucking more after that that you don't know. You know that like, were you? Wait a minute, I will say this part of the story. Were you there the day I told her to go fuck herself? Erica! Yeah, because Caleb was sitting right across from me when she fucking punched me in the face. So I'll probably bring that up. Yeah, wasn't she, like, bawling? No, she wasn't bawling, but it, it, it fucked with her. It, it did fuck with her. She's still on Facebook, um, and I know that because while she probably doesn't know it, she has spoken to me. <laughs> Let's just put it like that, you know? But... I don't know. I'll, I'll go more into it on the podcast. I got the notes written down for it and shit. But I've been putting off that episode for so long because, like, a lot of fucking. Mm, a lot of baggage to unpack with her, you know?
And it's weird because we never dated, you know, or anything like that. But, like, there, there's a lot of baggage to unpack with Pat, with me. Like, a lot of shit up here, you know, mentally. For those of you who need context, just by the way, Caleb is somebody I used to work with at High V. Um, we used to work together at a uh, fucking customer service and shit. I think I met. Oh, I mentioned Caleb in the um. Oh, what episode was it? Hold on, let me pull up my podcast episode. Hold on, because I did mention him before. It was episode. Episode 19, a series of unfortunate events. No, I lied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in that one. Yeah, that's the one I mentioned him in. Yeah, that that's the one I mentioned him in. In this relatively short time while we worked there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell this story because Caleb hates when I tell this fucking story. <laughs> Caleb hates this fucking story. So, again, me and Caleb worked at fucking high and shit, right? And, like, there was these two girls that worked there. And they were quite attractive and shit, right? One was Bianca and one was uh, Evelyn and shit. So, <laughs> one night, I'm like, I'm a, I am think I'm leaving work. I think that's what it is. I'm either leaving work or about to leave work. One of the two and shit. So, I, I, Caleb can clear this up if he wants, but I'm not 100% on this. But I think Caleb kind of had a thing for Bianca. Not 100% on that. You can clear that up if you want. But, like, um, Evelyn was was cute. You know, not really my type. She's real tall, so tall girls are not really my fucking thing. But Caleb comes to me, and he's like, hey, Will, you, I think that's what it was. Are you about to get off? And I was like, yeah, I'm about to get off here in a few minutes. And he's like, all right. And then there's a pause, and Caleb goes, oh, hey, me, Bianca, and Evelyn are, are about to go to Perkins. Now, the way he said that was like, hey, Will, me, Bianca, and Evelyn are about to go to Perkins. Do you want to come? You know, that that's the way it sounded. Like, the way he was, you know, structuring that fucking sentence. You know, like, hey, me, Bianca, and Evelyn are about to go to Perkins. Do you want to come? But what came out was, hey, Will, me, Bianca, and Evelyn are about to go to Perkins. And I'm like, uh-huh. Like, I I'm waiting for the fucking invite. You know what I mean? You know, like, I'm waiting for him to be like, hey, do you want to come? You're like, I'll give you a ride. Because, you know, they all knew I walked and shit like that, you know? So, like, I'm waiting for the fucking invite and shit. So, he's like, me, Bianca, and Evelyn are about to go to Perkins. Uh-huh. And he's like, well, see you later. And he just fucking pieces off. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Why did you even tell me? <laughs> you could have just sat on that one. You could have just been like, see you later, Will. See you. You know, I would have been none the fucking wiser on that one. You know? I fucking taunt him with that story to this day. <laughs> it's one of the... I will say, part of it's one of those you had to be there type of situation. Because if you would have heard the sentence structure of that... Keep in mind, this... <laughs> <laughs> close to a decade. <laughs> I mean, like, if, if people would have just heard the, the sentence structure of that, people would have thought, like, oh, he's going to invite Will to fucking Perkins and shit. Maybe fucking he gets in on Bianca. Maybe fucking Will gets a little fucking work in on Evelyn, even though it's not really his fucking thing and shit like that. Because up until Evelyn shaved her fucking head, she was, you know, she was attractive. You know, and shit. But, like, just the way he was just like, hey, we're about to go to Perkins. And I'm like, and he's like, see you later. And I'm just like, what the fuck? It's almost as bad as when Dana was just like, hey, Will, I saw you walking home in the rain the other day. And I'm like, hey, you could have stopped and picked me up instead of telling me about that. You know, like, she shaved her head. Yeah, like, because, uh, like, Evelyn, believe it or not, went off to be out, become a model. Uh, she moved to, like, fucking, like, what, Oregon or some shit? Caleb would know better than me, but I think she moved to, like, Oregon or fucking Washington. 
one of those like north northwest states or some shit. And like at one point, man, there it is on Instagram one day, man. Fucking boom, she fucking shaved the head, and I was like, yeah, you know, Oregon. That's it. Or could have told you the day. Yeah, could have told me the day after. Hey, well, we went to Perkins. Jesse. Yeah, fucking. He hates when I fucking tell that story. <laughs> And for those, and you know, so y'all don't have to go listen to it, but like in episode 19, I tell this story one time of um, me and Caleb were at customer service one day and it was fucking slow as shit. Now, just keep that in mind. Me and Caleb at customer service, it's slow. Now, we had this co worker that I'm not gonna, I, I don't know her fucking personal life. I don't know her dirty laundry. So I'm not really gonna fucking air it all that much, but apparently she had some issues, you know? And word got through the store that apparently she was gone the last few days because she attempted suicide, which, okay, whatever, you know, people have issues and shit like that, you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to judge you for do, doing that, you know, whatever, until you piss me off, <laughs> which is about to happen. So for the purposes of this story, I'm just going to call her Jenna. I'm not going to say her real name, but Jenna uh, showed back up at work. Now, me and Jenna did not have a great relationship with each other, you know? Like, there was a time where I said something to her, and the response was like, shut up, Will. And I'm like, what the fuck did I do to you? Okay. You know, whatever. One day, we're in the break room, and she said something to me. Jenna said something to me, and I looked right at her, and I was like, shut up, Jenna. And she looked at me like I fucking, you know, shit in her fucking lunch. And I just looked at her. I was like, see, it's not so fun the other way around, now, is it? She didn't say a fucking word. Okay? So, time goes on. The suicide attempt happens. She comes back to work. Everything's fine. You know? So, I figured she did the suicide attempt. Maybe she fucking saw some glimmer of hope in her life or some shit. Like, fuck, I lived... Maybe I should get on the up and up and be a better person and shit like that. Oh, boy, I'm about to fucking learn the lesson on that one. So we also had a mutual friend, or I don't know if Caleb's friends with her, but we had a mutual friend named Lauren. And one day at customer service, it's slow. Caleb's, like, off to my fucking right. And, like, there was, like, this area that I used to stand in and just, like, wipe in circles just to make it look like I was doing something. And nine times out of ten, it would work. Because people come up to me, they're just like, hey, Will, can you, oh, you're busy, never mind. And I'm just standing there, just wiping a circle for like an hour, you know? So I'm standing there just wiping a circle, just trying to make it look like I'm busy, you know, like I'm cleaning and shit. And right in front of the counter is Jenna, or, or Lauren and Jenna. And they're they're talking about something. I don't even fucking remember what it is, you know? I'm standing there wiping. Caleb's just down here fucking doing whatever. I don't even know what he was doing either. I'm wiping and shit. And Jenna said something to Lauren that like, again, usually my memory is really good. Um, <laughs> I'll talk about that in a second. Cause like, I got something else to say about Caleb. So, um, I hear Jenna say something where, like, I, you know, kind of, like, jumped in and said something. Like, you know, not nothing like, hey, fuck off or anything. You know, it was something, like, helpful. You know, something like that. I don't remember what it was, but it was something helpful. As I'm wiping, and all of a sudden, Jenna looks over at me and says, shut up, Will. And I'm like, and now in a half a second that she said that, my brain went, you attempted suicide and came back from this, you know, or do you look, listen, you know, look, look, this this part's not in the podcast, but like, listen, I've been there, you know, I've been to the poor point where like, I, I've called suicide hotlines. I've, I've been to that fucking rock bottom and shit like that. It, it fucking, so I get it. Okay. But like, really, you actually went out and attempted suicide, came back and you're still going to be the fucking shit person that you are. Okay. So she says, shut up, Will. So I stop, I stop wiping, and I look her dead in her fucking eyes. And I was just like, oh, 
I'm sorry, you're alive? Caleb over here, like Caleb's over here to the right. And I just feel, I just feel the jaw drop to the floor. Just, did he just fucking say that? You know, like, <laughs> so like she, Jenna takes a second, looks at me and then goes back and finishes her conversation with Lauren. And then they fucking peace off. Right. Caleb just fucking walks over to me and was like, dude, that was fucking savage. I was like, I don't give a fuck, man. Like, fucking, she did that and fucking gonna tell me to shut up again. Fuck her, right? So, um, that's the story that I mentioned in the podcast. Now, what I wanted to mention here, dude, that was bullshit. I always got called the bag while you just wiped the circle. <laughs> Here's why, though. Okay? So, people, me and Caleb would be at customer service. And again, it's fucking slow and whatever like that. So, like, somebody would walk up to customer service, you know, and uh, they would pull Caleb aside. And they'd be like, hey, Caleb, uh, this person didn't show up tonight. So, like, um, I know you're supposed to leave at, like, 6 at customer service. But do you mind staying till, like, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock? Is that okay? And Caleb, just fucking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, like, yeah, no problem. Sure. You know? And they're like, thanks, Caleb, appreciate it. And then Caleb would walk back behind the counter. And he would come to me. And the first thing he'd fucking do is... um, He's like, what the fuck is this bullshit? How come I have to fucking stay and everything? This is fucking bullshit, man. Like, why don't they fucking get somebody else to fucking stay? In the first few times, I just let it roll off my shoulder. But by the time it got to, like, you know, time 17, I'm just like, you know, you realize you don't have to say fucking yes, right? It is an option they're giving you. You're the one that keeps saying yes. And he's like, yeah, I know and shit, you know. No and behold, 15 minutes later, man. Hey, do you mind staying an extra hour tonight? Sure, no problem. You know, and then the second they walk away, this is fucking bullshit. How come I have to stay an extra hour and shit? I'm like, you could have said no. <laughs> and learn being a yes man at work doesn't get you shit. <laughs> oh, man. That's when they care less about shit. Well, then shit, I must have been really fucking reliable. Because they didn't care two shits about me. I'm pretty sure it was like store manager, assistant store manager, HR, um, all the assistants who ran the floor, the cashiers, the fucking people who ran the other departments. Uh, the garbage in the back and uh, the cigarettes in the fucking parking lot and, and then fucking me. I'm pretty sure that was a hierarchy there. Um, you know. And when you start saying no, that's when they look to fire you. But the, he, here's the thing with that, Leo. At hy V, I I can't tell you how many fucking times um, oh my god, some of the assistants were so fucking stupid. We had to I can't tell you how many times I personally, I don't know about Caleb or anything, but like me personally got asked a question with a choice that didn't really have a choice. Like just for example, he'd be like, Will, do you want to go outside and get carts? No, thanks. I'm good. (laughs) Oh, okay. We'll just go ahead and go do it. Then why the fuck do you even ask? If it wasn't a choice, why didn't you just tell me to go get cards? Wouldn't that have been the easier fucking solution to this problem? Because now what you've done, you've fucking, you've done alienated me. You've pissed me off. You know, Scott was the king of asking. No, fucking big, tall and stupid was fucking uh, Austin, uh, fucking Hanover. Fuck him. He's a him and Brandon are two people. If I ever saw on the fucking street, I'd run him over with the fucking car. I don't give a fuck. Go ahead, send this to him. I don't give a shit. Scott, I don't even remember a fucking Scott. Scott, Scott. the fuck was Scott? 
Oh, yeah, that's right. Scotty. Okay. Yeah, but I was cool with Scott. I never had any problems with Scott. Scott was one, Scott and Kale were two of the only people that I never had any issues with. Hey, Leo, do you want to go fill up the bananas by self-checkout? No, I'm good. Well, here are the bananas. Go do it. Tell us about money orders. Oh, my God. Okay. Here's a funny story about money orders. So, you know, hy V is a chain around here, for those of you who don't know. Um, and... Uh, there's one that we have here, High V on First Avenue. I always knew it as fucking High V on First Avenue. I'm about to get a new name for this motherfucker tonight. I don't know if Caleb was here for this or not. I think it was me and Alexa that night. So I know Kale was there. I know that for sure. So lady comes in and she wants a $700 money order. No problem. Sure, let me get let me get on that. We have to write it on a pad, seven hundred dollars, fucking whatever. Type it into the fucking machine. Here you go. Print that out. All right. Go to the register. Type in the fucking thing. Seven hundred. Boom. Enter. Okay, seven hundred. Whips out a credit card. Okay, no, no can do. Money orders are cash only. And has anybody ever asked you what a word meant that you just did not know how to define? This was on one of those moments because she was like, what do you mean cash only? And I'm like, I'm like, how do I define the word cash? Like I was, I was fucking dumbfounded. I didn't know how to describe the word. I was like physical money. Like that, that's all that came out. That's all I had, you know? Cause I was just like, I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't, what, what else could fucking cash only mean? You know? And she was like, "Well, I do this here all the time." I was like, "You couldn't be here because we're cash we're cash only." And if somebody let you do that before, I apologize. They weren't allowed to let you do that. You know, this lady throws a fucking fit. Legal tender. That's a good one. You know? Oh, I'm pretty sure that would have fucking considering what she's about to say. I don't think she would have known what that meant. So again, we have a high V on First Avenue. We're on Mount Vernon. This lady throws a fucking fit, you know, the usual stuff, you know, fuck this high V, I'll never come here again, you know, the classics, you know. And finally, she's like, you know what, never mind then, I'll just go to ghetto V and do it. And at first, that, that sentence did not register in my head, you know, I'll go to ghetto V and do it. I was like, you have a good night. She walks away and everything, and just kind of standing there. Kale's standing right there. I'm standing there. You know, it's kind of like that gag I do where I'm just like, yeah, who is that? And that's what it was. I was just like, yeah, you go there then. Kale, did she say ghetto me? And he was just like, yeah. I'm like, elaborate? And he's like, I be on first half. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, it's in the ghetto, Will. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> But I was a dom and they're like, what do you mean cash only? And I'm like, cash. Cash. What's the definition of cash? How do I describe that? <laughs> just sitting there, just like, how do I describe it? I'm like, money. No, that's not going to work. So the ghetto takes more than cash. Yeah, apparently. They did, because now I go to that high V because uh, technically I'm banned from all the high V's in Cedar Rapids, but I, I go to I go to First Ave and Wilson Ave. Um, I don't go to I don't go to my one that I used to anymore. Although none of the people that I used to work with are there anymore, except for one that I know of. The HR lady that fucking hired me is dead. You know, so. We've been wanting to go in there just to, like, test the waters to see if they're going to be like, hey, you, get out of here, you know, but we haven't done it yet, and I don't want to do it by myself. I don't want to go in there by myself, and they're just like, you know, 911. So.
Caleb was there when I got banned. He, he was still working there when I got banned. They sent out a fucking email about it. That's how fucking popular it was. They sent out an email. If Will shows up in the store, fucking kill him. No, I didn't say that. But you get in there, it's like normal. Worst case scenario, you walk out. <laughs> See, and that's the one I want to avoid. And that's why I started the series High V Hell and shit like that. Because, like, people need to understand that, like... And, like, and I think Caleb can attest to this if he's still here. Is that, like, when people would come work at our store from other stores, people would be like, oh, my God, my store in Sioux Falls is so great. Or, like, my store over here is so great and wonderful and everything. You never hear that about our store. I've never once heard, like, oh, my God, that store on Mount Vernon, man, I fucking love it. Not once. Not once did I hear that. Like, job titles, I don't understand why. I don't know why this turned into, like, a bashing high V type of thing, but whatever. Um, like, job titles, job titles did not mean fucking anything there. Because you're going to do whatever the fuck they tell you. You know? Like we have, um, we have what they call a health and beauty center. I just woke up from a nap. Man, that sounds good right now. I'm drinking a monster energy at seven o'clock and I told you how fucking like lagging I am and shit. Oh, Jax, I take gummies now. I haven't taken them in about a week, though, because I had a bad trip last week. <laughs> you ever finger? Um, no, but I did get in trouble for making out with somebody in the safe room. Because, like, Jax, I started with one, and then I worked up to two, then I worked up to three, and then, like, last week was WrestleMania, so I was like, you know what, WrestleMania, we're doing four. We found my limit. We found my limit, and it is fucking three. <laughs> Do you have a safe word for the safe room? I think it's please don't shoot me in the fucking face. I think that's the uh, the safe word. Please don't shoot me in the fucking face. I think that's our safe word in there. I don't even do a full one. Well, like, I, I did one one night just to see, like, all right, let me see how I do with it. I forgot I took it. We went to the fucking grocery store. And, like, I'm just fucking daffy at the grocery store. You know? Um, so I'm just like, wow, these really relax me. So I would take one and come down here and play games and go live and shit like that. And I was like, fuck it, let me take two. And I tend to rant when I take them. Uh, Leo can attest to that. I tend I tend to rant sometimes. And not like the the, the, the rant that I just went on about high V or anything, but like I think one night I was ranting about Dora the Explorer and about how the guy who wrote the I'm the Map song is a fucking genius. Some shit. I don't know. Um, so like rants like that. So that's why one night I was like, I'm taking three. So I took three and I was, I was feeling real good. Cause I get really fucking relaxed. Like, oh my God, like all my problems go away for a few minutes, you know? Uh, so like, like I said, last week, WrestleMania, I was just like, oh fuck, I'm going to take four, watch WrestleMania, go on live, man. We'll fucking have a good time, man. I, I almost threw up. I had stopped the live. I was so fucking quote unquote high, I guess. You know, because I was just like, I'm going to fucking die. (laughs) 
I'm still collecting goats for you. You have to collect you have to collect goats for Erica too. You have to win Erica over too. That was nice that Caleb came in here. Nice little trip down memory lane there. Caleb was one of the few people that I actually got along with at Ivy. Never had any problems with him, except for that whole Parkins incident. Oh, Marissa, Marissa, message me for the message, Marissa. Mm -hmm. What's up, Chica? Where's Jason? No idea. I don't know where Jason is. I don't know where Elijah is. I sent him the link to it, too. Stug said, yeah, I sent him the link to it this time. I sent it to Elijah, like, hey, come on. I'm live. Let's go. Maybe we could play, you know, what would you do for a clown like bar? But oh, also, let me get that description done. Um, I know I haven't talked about them that much, but hardtofindtv.com has a brand new website. It is in the description down below. You can still head on over there. Use my checkout code artist, A-R-T-I-S-T, -S at checkout and save 15, 15%, 15% on your purchase. Their new website is in the description down below. It'll be in the description going forward here. Um, so, yeah. So, keep that in mind. Um, so, yeah. If you want to save 15% on your purchase for those hard-to-find TV shows on DVD, um, they also now do thumb drives as well as digital downloads. So if uh, for some reason you're like, hey, you know, I know physical media is dying, fuck it, and you want to do a thumb drive or digital download, they offer those too. Just head on over to the new website. In the description down below, use that checkout code artist, save yourself 15% on your purchase, and uh, let them know that I sent you. Because as I like to say, if they don't have it, you don't need it. So, uh, yeah. I think that's everything in the description. Not description, um, title. Podcast. Um, yeah, okay. That's everything. He came back to say he's back from camping. Hasn't been, I know, right? Shit. Sure. If Erica's still in here, I just want her to know that whenever a customer comes in and tells me that her name is Erica, I always put a K in it just for her. Oh, okay. Good boy. Yeah. Whenever they tell me that I'm like name for the order, they're like Eric. I'm like E R I K A. I'm going to get off to go eat and shower. You're barely even here. Fine. Get off of here then. I don't need you. I don't need anyone. I had my first date without you. I learned how to throw a jump shot without you. And I got pretty damn good at it, didn't I? I had 14 great birthdays without you. You never sent me a damn card to hell with you. Which, speaking of which, birthday's coming up. Amazon wish list description down below. If anybody's, if anybody's looking.
See, we have like seven, eight people in here. The second Jack says, all right, I'm out of here, fucking boom, three. They're all like, fuck this. All right, Jack's in here. Fuck it. We're out of here. Yep, Caleb pieced out of here. Caleb actually has a life, though, unlike me. Caleb has, like, a girlfriend and um, other shit. No, seriously, like, the second time I think Caleb's ever been in here and talked. He could have been in here other times and, like, you know, I don't even know, but. Good night, Will. Yeah, good night. Whatever. Back to reality tomorrow. Oh, you go back to work, eh? Yup. And just like that, we're down to two. Well, it was fun while it lasted, I guess, you know. We had a good run, you know. But I got Dynamite to look forward to in one and a half weeks. When you got shit to look forward to, work isn't too bad. Uh, I disagree, but you know, whatever. I mean, whatever floats your boat, you know. Might be back in Mexico in September. Why September? I'm here in... No one in my department has a vacation that month and no holidays. Better question is, where were you fuckers last night? When I was playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah, there you go. Stug is missing, dude. He, he's gone.
No, you weren't. Because you texted me to be like, when you going live? And I'm like, motherfucker, I done been live. I didn't know you went live. Mm. I know I posted a poll yesterday that was just like, what are you guys in the mood for tonight? And I posted like the options and everything. And like the, the, the winner was millionaire. So I was like, all right, I'll play who wants to be a millionaire and shit. No one fucking showed up. And I'm just like, why the fuck did y'all even tell me? I didn't see a poll. Did the trolls vote? Oh. That's why I said, when are you going live? I was like, motherfucker, I've already been live, man. All right, doesn't look like we're going to get anybody to play Klondike Park tonight, so I'm going to put this away. We'll try this again another night. And I do have a box from Joe from uh, MoviesRUSA.biz, but I'm going to tell you guys right now, between you and I, I'm going to have to, to act a lot when I... Do that tomorrow. I'm gonna be like, wow, look at this. And they did, and it's. I asked Joe, I forgot to ask yesterday, did you mail my package? Yes. As long as there's no follow-up questions, yes. Do any of us ever really get tracking, though, Jason? I don't get tracking either, you know, but you know, that's life, you know, sometimes in life we all don't get tracking, you know what I mean? But I asked Joe, I was just like, Hey, I know it's an expensive set, but can I get the Goldberg's complete series from you? And he said, sure. Like, I'm putting together a box for you right now. I was like, sweet. So, like, I look on my fucking mail app. The box is coming today. I'm like, sweet. You know, no telling what else he put in the box and everything. One, he put two season sevens of the Goldbergs in there. And then eight, nine, and ten. Which I'm like, Do, did you forget seasons one through six or something? Did you forget that was a thing? And the only other thing in there that I fucking recognize is fucking the Bray Wyatt documentary. Everything else, I'm just like, what is this? I have no idea what anything else in that fucking box is. Oh, except for the show Luther. I know of it. I've never watched it. It's Reptile. Reptile is not in there. So I was going to do that tonight. You know? So I was like, all right, man, I'm fucking, I'm going to go home. We're going to do fucking movies are USA.biz and shit. Mm -mm. No, we're not. We're doing that tomorrow. This might be a box I just might fucking tape up and just send to Jason and shit. The Netflix movie I'm looking for. All right, we'll try and play that again some other nights. Charge Jason like $10 shipping for the whole show. All right. Uh, just a second here. Hold on.
Okay, sorry. Um, oh, you want me to charge them ten dollars plus shipping for the whole box? Oh no. Uh, Triller TV app, it's like $50 for the next three AEW pay-per-views. I swear, man, if fucking Swerve doesn't win at Dynasty, then, like, I, I think I'm fucking over AEW, dude. I'm kind of over their fucking thing with, like, the women's division, where it's just like, okay... Listen, we all love Timeless Tony Storm. We all do. Come on. Let, let, let's call a spade a spade here. We all love t Timeless Tony Storm. But I'm getting tired. Um, I charge 10 for the first movie, then 5 for every additional. Um, but, like, I'm getting tired of, like, oh, my God, we've signed Deanna Perrazzo. Like, okay, cool. That's a good signing for you guys. Let's put her into a feud with Tony Storm. Um, I don't know. And then she jobs out to Tony Storm, and then that's it. She's fucking that's it. She's done. And I'm like, I mean, they used to do that with their men's division too. Perfect example when Moxley was fucking champion. Holy shit, we got fucking Brody Lee. Put him in a match with Moxley for the world title. Moxley kills him, and then fucking. The biggest accomplishment he achieved after that was the TNT title. And that was just more of a placeholder so Cody could go film his fucking reality show. So, you know, I'm kind of getting over AEW doing that shit. You know? Well, I know, like, fucking, they put the title on T... Uh, they put the TNT title on Brody Lee so Cody could go away for a couple weeks and do something. Maybe that TBS reality show or some shit. I don't know. Not the Roads to the Top one. Not that one. But the one that he was a judge on and shit. I don't remember. Nor do I fucking give a shit. Oh, and look who's live. Chad's live. Oh, okay. Is a new guy don't no, no, nothing good is in that fucking box except for the Bray Wyatt documentary and the Goldbergs. That's it. Like in Luther. If you like that show Luther, then fucking have at it. Everything else in there, I don't fucking know what it is. Like I said, I'm gonna have to do a lot of fucking acting tomorrow. Like, oh, sweet, look at it, you know. I was hoping for shit like Lisa Frankenstein, which that reminds me, I gotta add that to my family birthday list. You know, I was hoping for shit like fucking Lisa Frankenstein and fucking, you know, other shit. Brand new, man. It, it was fucking, I just looked at it and I was like, this, this is probably the worst one. Anyone but you. That's not in there. I think the Bray Wyatt documentary he only threw in because he knows I'm a wrestling fan. That's the only reason he threw that shit in there.
fuck no. Nothing is in there. Nothing. Goldbergs. That's it. And fucking Bray Wyatt. That's fucking it. Yeah, the Bray Wyatt's on uh, Peacock. I just haven't fucking watched it yet. Yeah, because I was going to do that tonight, but when I came home, because, like, you know, usually some of that shit I like to do blind, but, like, when I get something from him, I like to open it up and see what's in there and reorganize the box to, you know, all right, I'll show this first, and I'll save these for last, and everything like that. So that's why I opened the box beforehand. Um, So when I got home, I saw the box on the porch. I was like, all right. I opened the box, and I was just like, oh, no. You know, I was like... I was like, I just looked at it. I was like, fuck this. I, I'm not doing this tonight. <laughs> I'm going to go live. Maybe we'll play some fucking Klondike bar. I've been wanting to play that shit. You know what I'm saying? You give you queer. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, what the fuck is Alina talking about? Fuck, what what the fuck is Twitter? I don't know what the fuck that is. Oh, and I didn't put these dice in the fucking thing here. Oh, X! Yeah, I know X. He probably ate the oranges, probably. You haven't watched me any of that on Spragman. Man, I went to go watch that Fallout and shit, and, like, fucking, um, I was like, all right, cool, I'm going to go watch Fallout. I've been wanting to check this out. And it's not one of the shows where they release all the episodes at once. You're not missing much later. What the fuck? What are you talking about? The only match that was not worth a damn was fucking Jay versus Jimmy. That was the only match not worth a fucking damn. These people saying WrestleMania sucked this year are fucking retarded. I'm sorry. Oh, what you mean? All the episodes isn't there. What? When I went to go watch them, there was only one episode, the pilot. Hold on, let me look again. Hold on.
Oh, shit. Huh. Well, I'll be damned. Okay, when I went and looked, when I went and looked, there was only one episode. Now they're all there. Okay, I don't know. That's the only match I've seen. The main event. The, which main event? Night one or night two? That, that could have been it. No, it was Thursday. Thursday, because I was in my room. That's when I was like, all right, I'm going to pick up my room some, and I'm going to put something on the TV while I do it. So I was like, you know what? I'll put I'll put this Fallout on. You know, I've never played the game, so I was like, fucking hey, I'll, I'll watch it and shit. And there was only one episode. I was like, that's it? Just one episode? I was like, they're, they're going to do weekly with this? All right, fuck it. I'll just wait for all the episodes and shit like that, you know? Yeah. I would watch them tonight when I get off here, but I got to watch the fucking Jonesboro open. I kind of know what's going on. Kristen's fucking killing them right now, but I want to see how Cy Ananda does. She's probably not doing too well. Jimmy the Gin, what's up, baby squirrel? How you living? I hope all is good and you chilling. Okay. All right. Well, hey, thanks. Thanks for the positive compliment. You know. Appreciate you coming in. I like this show and I suck at the game. I've never fucking played the games. Never once. I don't think I've ever seen a fucking trailer for the games, to be honest. Chad has Queen Amadara in Sky Blue for a $125 dual song. Did you just fucking leave this live to go watch Chad? All right, he's making sure you didn't comment anything. Chad ate the Ocho. The Ocho. ESPN, the Ocho. See, now that's a movie I can understand giving you a boner and strip tease. One, that's a good movie. I don't care what people say. The critics tore that fucking movie apart. Secondly, yes, there's some good fucking nudity in that movie. Plus, it has a great cast. Demi Moore, fucking Ving Rhames, Burt Reynolds. Great fucking cast in that movie. I got a movie in the mail. I burnt copies of one and three. I got Johnny English Reborn. Yes, because at least it's a different movie. I'll give him that. We said there was other movies to get boners to, and he finally fucking found one. So, I mean, hey. That is a good movie, though. I'm not going to fucking lie. It is a good movie. I like that movie.
I watched the first Johnny English and I just, I, I wasn't too impressed with it. And it's not because I just know him as Bean. I've seen Rowan Atkinson and other shit and I felt like, I think he's fucking funnier than fuck in the movie Love Actually. That scene he's in in Love Actually is fucking so fucking fun. Can we watch that? Will I get in trouble if I fucking pull that up here? Oh, yes. Okay, hold on. Hey, Diana. This was the funniest fucking part. Looking for anything in particular, sir? Yes, I'm... Um, that necklace there, how much is it? It's 270 pounds. Um, all right, uh, I'll have it. Lovely. Would you like it gift-wrapped? Uh, yes, all right. Lovely. Let me just... Oh, yeah, my salary too, there. Look, could we be quite quick? Certainly, sir. Ready in the flashiest of flashes. <laughs> it's great. Not quite finished. Look, actually, I don't, I don't need a bag. I'll just put it in my pocket. No, this isn't a bag, sir. Really? This is so much more than a bag. <laughs> Could we be quite quick? Prontissimo. What's that? It's a cinnamon stick, sir. Actually, I really uh, can't. Oh, you won't regret it, sir. What about? It is but the work of a moment. Yeah. Almost finished. Almost finished. What else can there be? You're going to dip it in yogurt, cover it with chocolate buttons. Who knows? We're going to pop it in the Christmas box. But I don't want a Christmas box. But you said you wanted a gift wrapped. I did. <laughs> this is the final flourish. Can I just pay? All we need now. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no bloody heart. <laughs> leave it, leave it, just leave it. <laughs> Oh fuck, man! I love that part. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Is that Tim Allen? I never seen. You've never seen Love Actually? And no, that wasn't fucking Tim Allen. That was Alan Rickman. I recognize that guy, but I can't. Oh my god, guys! Please, you're fucking killing me, man. The counter guy was Alan Rickman. The guy buying the necklace was Alan Rickman, who was in it, who was Professor Snape and all that shit. Mr. Bean was the guy behind the counter doing the gift wrap, Rowan Atkinson. Guys, you're killing me here, man.
I'm culture and stuff. Yeah, bullshit. You're cultured and I have a 14 inch cock. Well, have you seen Total Recall? That one part. Man, it's been a long time, a long time since I watched fucking Total Recall. You know, but yeah, I mean, I remember three boobs. Yeah, of course. No, oh, wow. I think I I probably haven't watched Total Recall since because you know, fun fact about Total Recall, that was the last movie I fucking reviewed for a company. Uh, I believe Lionsgate? No, not Lionsgate. I forgot what fucking company sent it to me, but, like, they did a Blu-ray release of it, and they sent me a copy and shit. And that was, like, one of the fucking, like, last things I reviewed before I was done for a while and shit. And if, like, I don't even, I doubt that video is even still up, but if you go, if you watch that fucking video, I'm not there. Like, I'm not all there and shit. Like, the fucking, the wheel's spinning, but the hamster's dead. You know what I mean? Um, a girl had three nipples. Yep. And if you ever see the uh, the original cut of that mall rat scene, uh, she picks off one of the nipples and eats it and says, Mmm, cherry. Who else is naked? Oh, God. You're like the new Brett. I have to stop fucking reading your shit out loud. Or Leo probably knows about that. Leo, do you know who Scuba Steph is? That seems like somebody you would know. <laughs> Damn it, can we really deal with it? I haven't been in, I haven't seen Brett in here in a while. Was he, in, yeah, you were here. I fucking. Don't. 
조개, 조개. Oh, that's right. You did show a plate. Okay, my bad. My apologies. Here, Leo. Have you ever seen her? This seems somebody you would follow. I've seen her on C, on X, okay. Can you show a nude of her? Not on fucking YouTube, I can't. But if you search hard enough, you can find them. You can buy her autograph, Jason. Here. Um... Sign prints. Oh. Damn it. Hold on. Here's Christmas. Wait, oh, here they are, right here. All right, here we go. The bedroom. There is Beau Lingerie. This one, Christmas. We just did. Couch. Princess Leia, which I'm shocked that's even fucking her. And San Diego Chargers. She's a Chargers fan. Is that all the ones you got here? Okay, hold on. There's there's more. Hold on. Oh wait, hold on, let me open it first. Okay. okay. Here we go. Got the Harley Quinn. We got Catwoman. We got good old Rhonda. Rhonda and Wendy. Poison Ivy. Mary Jane. Fast food. Hooters. Cowgirl and Velma, I think. Yeah, Velma. Plus, you can add a personalization right there. The only thing I hear, I think, like in the comments, let's see. <clears throat> um, oh, okay. I used to read in the comments that, like, she used to take a while to, to uh, fucking send. So, like, when she would take a while to send, she would uh, send you an extra one, too. But looks like she changed that. Oh, the screen's black. I'm sorry. Here you go. Sorry. I forgot. I always got I always forget. I gotta go back and okay, let me go through them again. Okay, sorry. Harley. Right here. Catwoman. Good old Rhonda. Wendy and Rhonda. Poison Ivy. 
Mary, Mary Jane. Fast food. Hooters. Cowgirl. Velma. There we go. Add a description or personalization. I mean, right there. There you go. Did you see T straight in her T strat in her? Oh my god! Let me send. Let me send you what I fucking sent to. Um, I'm gonna send it to you the exact same way I sent it to fucking Shelby and um, uh, Nick. Did you buy any of them? No, I haven't bought from her yet. You know. Oh, check this out. Look what I got. Y'all want to check out this Terry Reynolds I got coming? Check this shit out. Look at this badass shot I got coming. Terry Reynolds. That's fact, because she's not worried about her nips falling out. Exactly. Especially in that fucking outfit. Oh, my God. And Leo saw this photo, but this is a good fucking photo, too. Wow. Look at the legs. Right there. Look at this shit. The yellow makes her much sexier. I've seen a clip of Stone Cold saying he lift her dress up, but he has to be careful. Her balls fell out. Huh? I think it was Terry Reynolds. Hmm. Plus, I got a um, Darren Drozdov coming. Darren Drozdov, who is a quadriplegic. Let that one sink in for a minute. And um, I got Zia Lee coming. Oh, I got a Zia Lee today. Oh, fucking A. Check this shit out. Hmm, where's it at? It's not a ring gear one. I would have preferred fucking ring gear, but I mean, shit, I'll take what I can fucking get for the price that I got it for. I'll take it. This is Zyali I got coming. And to add to my old school collection, I have Yeah, I saw I saw that the first goddamn time. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera. But... And I got this coming. From my old school collection. Mad Maxine. Somebody who was like in the business for like a fucking cup of coffee. And left because of Fabulous Moolah. Plus it's going to be personalized to me and shit. Fuck.
I've actually been buying some stuff lately. Plus, I got a new Tessa Blanchard, Ty of Valkyrie, dual sign coming. Um, I think that's all I got coming right now. I should have a Riley Reed come. You know what? Let me message him. I paid him March 16th for this fucking thing and I still haven't gotten it. Oh, yeah, shit. Fuck. Plus, I got shit from Neil coming. Fuck. I got a CJ Perry, a Honky Tonk Man, and Nasty Boys coming from Neil. Oh, Stephanie. Oh, oh okay. That's all I like. I was like, when did he ever fucking say that about Terry Runnell in the man? Fuck, I wish I had a Stephanie McMahon, but I don't have fucking $800 to drop. Well, let me rephrase that. I have $800, but I'm not going to drop it on a fucking Stephanie McMahon autograph. Listen, if you can drop $800 on one autograph, hey, fucking hats off to you. As Dan Sky liked to say, man, like, hey, that's a whole lot of money, but that's a whole lot of autographs, man. But, like, I, I physically can't fucking do it. For $850, I better get the autograph from Stephanie and a fucking blowjob. Or at least see her tits. One of the two. I'll settle for either one. And I found this just chilling upstairs. I forgot I even fucking had it, to be honest. This Alicia Fox. Oh. So, check this out. Hold on. Y'all might find this funny. Hold on. Okay. So, Marissa has something that, like, we're trying to figure out a trade on. Now, most of you guys know I buy my shit cheap. So, like, to have a something that's equal to $50, kind of fucking hard for me. You know? So, I offered her a metallic Dana Brooke 11 by 14. She was like, oh, I'd rather have 8 by 10. I was like, all right, I'll take another look. Since I don't really talk with Chad that much anymore, I was like, fine, fuck it. Chad's not, you know, I don't give a fuck what Chad thinks anymore. So I was like, I'll offer her one of the fucking Lacey Evans that Chad gave me and shit. So I sent her this. I was like, Funhouse Metallic, you know, 8x10 for the Blair, for the Blair Davenport. I thought that was fair. Right away, she looks at it and she sends me a message and says, what else do you got? I said, I just sent her back a picture of me just looking like. She was like, I just want to know what kind of options there are. So I was like, okay, if you get this, I'll throw this in. And she just started laughing. <laughs> I was like, I'll throw in a fucking free Marissa if you fucking take it. Because like this I had, I got it for free. Then I traded it for an Alexa Bliss I wanted. Then I actually bought it back because Chad was all butthurt about me giving it away. You know, then he sent me this last year for my birthday and shit. So, but I was like, I don't give a fuck, you know, so.
This is like my fucking. So no, no, not yet. Because like I don't. Again, I buy my shit cheap, so like I don't really have um, a lot of shit that's equal to fifty dollars for the Blair Davenport that she wants. So you know, because like fucking, you know, like the like fucking Tiara James, you know. Um, Hold on, Jamie's messaging me. I was really hoping that would say I'm drunk and I want cock, but that's okay. Oh, the Lacey Cheeseburger one? Yeah. Metallic. Like this right here, I got for like 10 bucks. You know, Jamie needs to come on the podcast. There needs to be a part three. I mean, we could talk about that probably. I did. I saw that. I actually saw the article you posted. Uh, uh, fucking Diana almost called you Jamie because that's your fucking real name. Um, but yeah, I actually saw the fucking article for that. I'm, I'm, I'll fucking believe it when I see it. Because you know how many times, up until that actual third fucking Blair Witch Project came out, you know how many goddamn times they said, hey, we're making a new Blair Witch Project before it actually fucking came out, you know? They're not remaking it. They're making a new movie. So, like, a lot of my shit's cheap. You know, every now and then I'll splurge a little. Like, that cost me, you know, not $10, you know. Or, like, this Ahmed Johnson, that's, like, fucking nine bucks. Or, like, shit that, like, I could offer her that's worth it. She probably doesn't want. Like, I doubt she went to King Kong Bundy, you know. Are they going to search for Heather? Because they won't find her. Fuck them. I, I don't care what people say. I like the fucking third movie. I think the reason why the third movie did not do so well is because people didn't understand it. They, they didn't understand what the fuck was going on in it. And if you watch it very carefully, the only thing that I don't understand, I think I understand what the white light is. The director even says in the commentary, he was like, the movie flopped at the box office, so I'm not explaining what the white light is. And I was like, fuck, but I think I think I know what it is. I'm fairly certain I know what the white light is. You know? But... Or, like, I could offer her fucking a disc off signed by fucking Kristen Tatar, but, you know, good luck trying to sell that one. Besides, I wouldn't fucking trade it. Anyway... Cause this this one right here cost me a fucking an absolute amount of money in my opinion. You know? What's the white light? The white light. Okay, so I know Leo's gonna fall asleep while I explain this, but so in the movie there is a part I gotta explain basically the whole movie to explain the white light. So in the movie there's those two characters who you know they fucking oust. You know, like, oh, you took us out here and you didn't even know where the fuck you were going? Get out of here. So they shoo them off and shit. Then we meet up with those characters later and they're like, um, oh my God. You know, like, how much time has passed? Now I heard that Damien Priest is dating CJ. But, oh, wow. Good for him. Um, I got a CJ Perry coming. Um, so then they meet back up and they're like, how much time has passed? And the the, the original group are just like, couple hours and they're like yeah okay nice try see you later it's been five days okay so that right there that tells you right there that something's up obviously to them it's been five fucking days to them it's been a couple hours okay so obviously there's there's a rift in time somewhere okay so the next time we see that guy the the fucking guy that they ousted he has a fucking full-on beard so by that time, in his time, it's been like a fucking month. You know, it's been longer. You know? Meanwhile, again, this is all in one night for the main characters. So when they get into the house, 
and we see the white light flash the fucking house. And they're like, what's that? That's the fucking time rift catching up with them. So now they're all in the same time. That's my theory on the white light. People, people, oh God, the, the theories on the white light are fucking insane. Like aliens is one of the theories, which I'm like, really? The Blair Witch is a fucking alien? Kind of far-fetched, considering that there's nowhere about fucking aliens in the lore of the fucking Blair Witch. Going all the way back to fucking, to the, I think, what, what, 1600s? With, um, oh, fuck, what's your goddamn name? Ellie Kentwood. There's no fucking lore about anything extraterrestrial in there. Rustin Parr, nothing extraterrestrial there. So I don't know where people are getting the fucking alien theory from. You know, so I don't know. It, that's that's my theory. With I think it's the rip in time catching up to everybody. You know, that's my theory. Uh, Leah, did you survive or you away? <laughs> and like, I keep looking through my stuff to see if there's something maybe I'm overlooking that could be worth something for her that's $50, but like, I, I, I just can't fucking find anything. And the shit that is worth $50 is like, um, um, you know, like, 11 by 14 that she doesn't want. You know, like I have probably a Carmella in here that's probably worth 50. I have a Bailey that's probably worth 50, maybe. Um, I doubt she wants Sarah Chalk, and I wouldn't trade that anyway. Like my Maven Metallic would probably be up there, but I don't know. I don't want to trade it. Now I'm sad I won't see Roman Reigns again too long. Fuck, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad we won't see Roman Reigns for a while. I think it's time. It's time to move on. It's the Cody wagon now. It, it, it's time. But Charger 250. No, I'm not sure. I'm not trading the Hogan for a fucking Blair Davenport. Hell, I was, I was like fucking like conflicted whether or not to trade the Hogan for fucking Stacy Keebler. If if Brendan would have said I'll trade you the Hogan, I'll, I'll trade you the Stacy Keebler and the Orndorff for the Hogan, I probably would have done it. But he doesn't want to do the Orndorff and the Stacy for it, which is you know that's understandable. You know. I awake the last person on my favorites list is Cody. Really? You don't like Cody Rhodes?
<clears throat> Let me look through my normal stack. Obviously, she's not getting any fucking Tesla Blanchard. Besides, I, don't, I think I only have one Tesla Blanchard that'd be even close to be worth $50 anyway. And I'm not trading that. See? I should have just sent this stack to Tesla Blanchard and just been like, this is just Tesla Blanchard. Just that stack alone. I'm just the 8 by 10s and the fucking 11 by 14s are over here. All right. Like Velveteen Dream, Velveteen Dream would be worth fucking 50 in my opinion, but I'm not trading Velveteen Dream. Um, I like the one of her and her dad. See, I don't like that one, man. I just I just like it because it's Tessa Blanchard, but people tend to tag me in that one too. Like whenever they see like the, the dual sign Tully Blanchard and Tessa Blanchard, they're like, oh fucking will. I'm like, I can give a fuck about her dad. I mean her dad's cool and all, but like I don't want to fucking dual sign with him. All right, we're looking for something fifty dollars worth. Let's see. Nope, Nyla Rose is definitely not fifty dollars worth. I thought about offering her this, you know, because like I, I I could live without that, you know, but I don't know. And she's not really into provocative photos, so and besides, again, I wouldn't train my swimsuit one either. Got all my Maki Itos. All my Holly, Holly Hoods. All six of them. And my personalized one. All right, the Patriot. No. Sophia Cortez. Which, okay, that reminds me. Hold on. Yep, first of all, this is Roman Reigns, two Damian Priest, three Dominic. Really? Dominic Mysterio. Really? You moved the Miz all the way down to number six? Wow. The Miz used to be like your fucking dude, man. I'm kind of shocked by that. This is when I traded that um said Marissa Chloe shit. She can have her. This is when I traded that um Lacey for the first time. Oh, here we go. We'll just trade our Adam Rose. I mean, come on. That's 50 bucks right there. Come on. Did you ever get a new... Yes, I did. They actually came yesterday. My sister ordered them. I didn't even ask her to. She did that on her own because she knew I wanted that dog dead. See, I'm glad I held on to these fucking Virgils. Virgil prices skyrocketed. 
I was watching Richie last night. Richie was just like, okay, I think it's been long enough. Now, I I, I want to remind you guys that like when Virgil was alive, Virgil was like a seven to like fifteen dollar autograph, no matter how many times I said it was 150. Okay. So Richie says, okay, I think enough time has passed. I'm going to sell him. And he holds up fucking Virgil. And he's like, and listen, I'm not going to gouge anybody on these or anything like that. So Virgil, $40. And I'm like, Did, didn't you just say you weren't going to gouge anybody? <laughs> like, I like Richie. Don't get me wrong. Richie, Richie's a Richie's a cool guy and shit like that. But like, the only reason the one I sold Jason was forty is because it was on that like Hasbro figure like thing. That's the only reason his was forty. All right, on my Mercedes Martinez. But I just like, I was like, I'm not going to gouge anybody. It was like 40 bucks. And I'm like, Ranger Mo is still selling Virgil for $7. And he's dead. Does anybody know who the fuck this is? Maybe Leo knows. Leo, do you know who the fuck this is? Because I don't know who it is. Hold on. I got it for free. Somebody just sent it to me. So, like, I, I don't fucking know what it is. Or who it is, I should say. Oh, it's LMAO. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Doesn't really look like an LMAO, but all right. Good to know. Good to know. You know, I'm not even going to put that in the top loader. Okay. You know what? I'm going to get these fucking 8 by 10s out of these 8 and a half by 11s. By the way, I don't know who that is. You, you just said it was LMAO. I said, hey, do you know who this is? And you said LMAO. Uh, Jason, because I don't know who the fuck it is, uh, 10 bucks.
but if you try to figure out who it is, I'll let you know if I want to. All right, I'll let you know. On your wish list are gone. You're out of it. Next. Okay, for, for the three people watching, if anybody goes to my Amazon wish list and wants to buy me a coloring book, I appreciate that. But right now, I haven't colored since we got the goddamn dog. Because the dog kind of took over my fucking coloring spot. So I I would I would avoid the coloring books. Because like I would hate for you to get me something that I don't use. You know? So Okay. I know I say this a lot, but like I seriously fucking don't remember buying this many goddamn Mercedes Martinez. Yep, Jason got me free guy. Which is a good flick. Oh, Will sends me something for my birthday. I don't have an Amazon wish list. Yeah, there you go. You need to make one. There you go. You want something, you got to make something, you know? Oh, Vanessa Craven. Man, I need some fucking... That's what I need to put in the fucking Amazon wish list. Some goddamn top loader is what I fucking need. Shit. This is an eight by ten. Oh, yeah, because it's with the personalization essentially. See, I have nothing here that's worth $50 for the fucking um and I will pay you a present to for your birthday. Okay, that sentence kind of broke my brain because I don't get it. What's for dinner? Uh probably fucking sleep. I will buy you a present. Okay, I was like, huh? Anybody want an angel phone? <laughs> That's a joke. I'm not really selling it. I mean, she has been wanting Killer Kelly. But it's not worth 50 bucks. Killer Kelly's not 50 goddamn dollars. We'll put Renee Michelle on the back of Susie. Dude, that's what I, Well, okay. What about Killer Kelly and the foot? Yeah, I might do it. I might push it over the top because she has been wanting a different Killer Kelly for her collection. So that might that might push it over the top. But here's the thing. I already have a Blair Davenport, so I really don't want to give too much just to get a goddamn Blair Davenport. You know what I mean? It's one of those things I like. I kept hoping would just go away, 
Like, okay, like, fuck, I don't have anything. And she'd be like, okay, that's cool. But, like, she's like, oh, I'll hold it for you, buddy. And I'm just like, listen, I love you, but. And I don't want to be a dick and be like, fucking, you know. All right, I need top loaders. Well, I'll probably get a top loader for. Did I show y'all this? Did I have this? This is not one you see every day. Penny Barber. That's old school. That's part of my old school collection right there. So I'll probably put that on the back of a uh, Mad Maxine when I get that. When I get the Mad Maxine. No, not the porn star. I don't know. So, see, Mercedes Martinez was somebody I was never into until she was fired from WWE. That's when I was just like, oh, I fucking love Mercedes Martinez. That's why I couldn't work for WWE. Because, like, they would have came to me and been like, okay, well, just to let you know, we're letting go of this person, this person, and Mercedes Martinez. I'm like, did you look at her ass? Well, you can go home now. I'm like, that's fair. And I've told people this is the one that you would have to offer me triple my money that I paid for it to even, like, just think about selling it. All right, yeah, I don't have anything. I'm just going to tell her. I looked through my shit. I don't have anything. Unless she wants Jimmy Wang Yang. I can give her Jimmy Wang Yang. Okay. Or another one you don't see every day, Fantasmo. Fantasio. Who burned down the gorilla position when fucking he was there. This one I'll never sell because I won't get the fucking price that I paid for it. So I'll probably never sell that because I'll never get the fucking price that I paid for it. Uh, the people who buy wrestlers used water bottles and coffee cups and shit from signings. I'm sorry, but you're sick. <laughs> hey, I almost bought um, Nia Jax's... Um, God, she did a signing with fucking Ramon. And uh, I asked Ramon, you know, my usual question. I'm like, did you get a strand of her hair? And he was like, what? No. I was like, oh, okay. He was like, uh, he, he was like, oh, what was it? Was it a Gatorade bottle? I think it was a Gatorade bottle or like a Starbucks cup, something like that. And I was just like, ooh. He was like, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> I was just like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I thought about it for a minute. <laughs> My ranking of Blair Witch is one, three, and two. That's fair. I can agree with that. Because if he would have had that coffee cup, that Starbucks cup or whatever of hers. I would have bought it. <laughs> I like three better than Book of Shadows, but if you can find the extended cut, it's awesome. Hmm. I like this Chelsea Green I like. Here's my NXT original promos of Raquel Diaz. Believe it or not, this is actually one of my favorites because it's dual signed. I actually like that piece a lot. Probably 
primetime Elix Skipper addressed to me, or personalized to me, I should say. Oh, I forgot I had Margaret Cho. Oh, forgot about that. Yeah, it's a fan cut. Well, it's a fan director's cut. Let's put it like that. It's it, it was the director's original intention, but a fan made it. If that makes any sense. Some more old school Judy Martin, Leilani Kai. I don't know nothing about that. Here's my Samantha Smart. Whopping. How much for Tom Arnold? Oh, I, I don't think I want to sell Tom Arnold yet. If it was Tom Arnold on probably anything fucking else, I, I'd probably sell it. But because it's on the carpool photo, that's probably why I'm hanging on to it. Hollywood. Oh, yeah, I don't think I ever showed y'all this. Yeah, this is a new Maki Ito I got right here. Fuck you. Plus, I got the one with her legs and shit. Uh, is carpool hard to find on DVD? I don't know. I don't know. Great Naya Glamour shot. The Velvet Team Dream. Oh. So this is an event used Lacey Evans. This is like when she made her pay-per-view debut back in 2019. But on the back, it's the Virgil fuck money. You've had that for a while, though. The Virgil or the Lacey? Lacey, yeah. Believe it or not, that's actually my second one that I bought. Uh, I had one before, and this is before I started, like, really hardcore collecting. Um, I bought one on eBay, and I was like, dope, man, that's awesome. And I put it on my fucking like nightstand that I had and I went to go look at it one day like oh let me look at my Lacey Evans and shit it was gone fucking gone I don't know what happened to it and shit so I went to eBay to see if there was another one because I was like oh it's event you so I don't know if there's gonna be another one and shit and lo and behold there was I was like fuck it hey so I had to pay for another one Your top loaders. See, the only Tessa Blanchard that I have that would probably be even close to that $50 mark is this one. Because this is young Tessa Blanchard. This is like when she was just starting out in the business and shit. If only Tessa had 8x10 to sign. 
She didn't have eight by tens to sell them. What the fuck was she selling then? That's what this was supposed to say. It says two artists up here. That's what this was supposed to say. It was supposed to say two artists, my biggest collector, Tessa Blanchard. But for some reason, the guy that was doing the signing didn't have her fucking sign that. So it just got two artists. But he gave me a free fucking autograph with it, so... Oh, it's her man's booth. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's what that one was supposed to say. This one took fucking forever to find. Because I saw this photo and I was like, oh my god, I need to fucking find this photo signed. And I did. It took fucking forever. She was taking photos with a few people that recognized her and shit. That was nice of her. So here's another young Tessa when she just started out. Or just like getting the ball rolling, I should say. Leo and her went out for no, not enchiladas, mit, micheladas. I don't know, some beer. I don't know. Somebody somebody messaged me on fucking Facebook and was just like, hey, I got this Tessa Blanchard in a mystery pack, and I'm not really a big fan of her. I know you love her, so like, can I just send it to you? I'm like, fuck yeah, you can. And like, look at it, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it was free. She was just like, just send me your address and I'll send it to you. I was like, oh my god, you rock, man. No, she didn't charge me shit. She said she got it in like a mystery pack and she's not a big Tessa Blanchard fan, but she knows I am. I didn't even know who she was, so she must just see me like in the fucking rooms and shit, just like hanging out and shit. So um, she was just like, oh fuck, I'll just send it to him and shit. This right here was the first thing I ever bought from Richie, right here. This one technically cost me $80 because I got it in a mystery pack and the other shit in the mystery pack I didn't really give a fuck about. So this is the only thing I really cared about. So technically this cost me $80. <laughs> oh, well, son of a bitch. I think I owe the dog an apology. I bought this autograph thinking I didn't have it, and um, the dog chewed it up. I already have it. Oops. You're just going to forget that happened. This one cost me 50. The bikini shot. Here's the one Jason likes for some reason. If it's a Tesla, fuck that. Nobody choose a Tesla. Yeah, but I already had one and I didn't know that. I thought I didn't have it. And then, of course, the coup de gras, my hot hands with their handprint.
the handprint's not coming up so well, but it's there. Okay. This is another one that cost me 50 bucks. But that was more than fucking reasonable for this piece, in my opinion. This one from Chad cost me like 40. <sighs> yep. That one, hold on. Let me get him. This one, this one, and I'm missing one. This one from Chad cost me about 35 to 40 a piece. And then I got um, this one, this one, this one, this one, that one, these two, and yeah, this one, all from Richie. This one was separate, but the last ones I showed from Richie, that cost me, all together, it cost me $127. Because he gave me a bundle deal on it. Chew. Oh, that's another thing I got coming. I got a metallic windy chew coming. Leo, you ever see? I've seen mine. Well, half naked, but. Yeah, I got to get out of here, too. I got to fucking go watch the dog and shit, you know? You have Wendy Richter coming. You do. You do. It's actually upstairs. I just got to fucking seal it and send it, which I'm off tomorrow. So hopefully I can get that. I still got to send my kids fucking shit out, man. You know, so. Yeah, you got Wendy Richter coming. Yeah. I accidentally walked in on my cousin in the laundry room changing pants. So. Yeah, but I can drop it off at hy V and it'll ship out Monday. So. Yep. I'm out of here, guys. Be breezy.